Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Be sure to check me out over on Rumble. There you'll find all of my stuff from YouTube, plus my political and social commentary and weekly current events, which YouTube frowns on. Links to my Rumble channel, as well as my other YouTube channels, and links to let you order my books are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a cryptid encounter video in the story I found the other day, U-Boat uh, 85. <clears throat> Excuse me. On April 30th, 1918, this is World War I, German Captain Gunther Kretsch was commanding a U-Boat which was damaged and disabled and it surrendered to the HMS Coriopsis. And this captain told a strange tale. Captain Kretsch and U-Boat 85 had been patrolling the Iris Sea. Uh, let me start that over. Captain Kretsch and U-Boat 85 had been patrolling the Irish Sea looking for targets of opportunity. Uh, they're trying to take out some shipping that were bringing vital supplies to Britain from the United States and Brazil. <laughs> Excuse me. U-Boat 85 was not having any luck. They hadn't fired a single torpedo at anyone. It was around midnight under a full moon and Kretsch was on the conning tower with some other members of his crew. They were using binoculars to search the waves looking for you know, something to shoot at, essentially. Um, they're, you have to understand, in World War I, U-Boats, they were not very... They were they they weren't very advanced. They they were very primitive. Uh, they 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 had to surface to look for stuff. They 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 I mean, it was it was they they didn't have sonar per se. If they did, it was very very primitive. They it's not like they could stay underwater and get right next to something surface and then shoot it. They had to find stuff to shoot. And when you're looking for targets of opportunity. You got to find the target. So that's what they were doing. And by the way, U boats surface at night so they can do this because if they surface during the day, they're sitting ducks. So they're up there, they're using their binoculars, they're searching the, way, the water, trying to find something to shoot at. Uh, suddenly, there was a terrific thud against the side of the boat. And this is in the Irish Sea off the coast of England. Kretsch looked down and saw a huge sea monster climbing out of the water up onto the side of his U-boat. The beast had large eyes in an odd-shaped skull with many horns on it. it. The head was small, but its teeth were seen glistening in the moonlight. Uh, it, in hindsight, this, this uh, description sounds a lot like what's called a Mosasaurus an aquatic reptile that went extinct, supposedly extinct, over 66 million years ago. Some of these creatures could reach 60 feet or more in length, and they're, they were vicious predators. <clears throat> now, there are people who say, well, you know, if it's extinct, how, how do they see one? Well, everybody thought the coelacanth was extinct for 65 million years. Turns out the people off the coast of Africa were catching them and eating them. They finally got a picture of one in the 1970s. Well, maybe it's something new. That's a possibility too, because in the night in, in the mid 1970s, I want to say it was 75, in Vietnam, where we had just fought a war, they discovered a new kind of antelope, and this antelope hides in the water and breathes through the top of its head. This, we had, again, we had just fought a war there and nobody saw it. Nobody, nobody you know, no, nobody said, hey, look, that's weird, you know. Turns out the locals knew all about it, but they didn't, they thought everybody else knew as well, so they didn't think to tell anybody. Uh, we now know that there are giant squids in the ocean. They, they, they got one on camera off the coast of uh, Japan, as I recall. They discovered a new kind of, uh, oh, what is it? A, a new a new type of an orca? I think it was, off the coast of British Columbia. I mean, my point is, it is very very possible for cryptids to exist. I'm not saying they do. I'm saying it's possible. This is a guy 
whose boat in whose military boat was captured, a warship was captured by the enemy, and he told this tale as to why it got why it got damaged. So maybe you, should, you know we should sit up and pay attention. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so Kretsch said that his men opened fire with their sidearms, but could not dislodge the animal from the boat. Apparently, it had a hold of the forward gun mount. The weight of the monster was forcing the 730-ton submarine below the waves with its hatch wide open. So Kresh ordered his crew to keep firing, and eventually it did let go of the gun mount, and it slid back into the ocean. Unfortunately, the boat had been damaged and could not submerge. As the sun came up, the U-boat, uh, excuse me, U-85, U-boat 85, was a sitting duck. The armed drifter, HMS Coriopsis, was patrolling the area and happened upon the damaged submarine. The crew gave up without a fight before the U-boat sank and the area of the attack. Oh, let me, let me, let me back up a second. They gave up without a fight because their boat was sinking. They had no choice. Okay. If that, if the Coriopsis hadn't showed up when it did, they would have sunk and been in the North Sea in the, in the cold light ocean without, you know, they'd had to paddle to shore or something. That's the only thing I can think of. They would have been captured anyway. They didn't have a choice. <clears throat> At that point, fighting was a, I guess, you know, I suppose they could have fired a torpedo at the boat, but at the Coriopsis. But again, that would have been stupid. So I, I, there's no, there was no logical way for them to survive if they did that. So the area of this attack has long been famous for sea serpent sightings. Since the U-boat sank shortly after the, the, the men were taken off, there is no evidence to support or to deny the account of this captain. Now, again, <clears throat> is it possible he just wanted to give up and his crew wanted didn't want to fight and they gave up and made up this story to cover their, their, their situation? Maybe. I don't know. But the fact that a military commander told this to another military commander while he, when he got captured and he gave this as the excuse for his boat being damaged that right there led to me that lends some credence you know you could say well we we developed mechanical problems we, we didn't have a choice <clears throat> you know our, our 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 hatch failed we, we 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 hit something and there was a hole in the boat we had to surface or we were going to sink and you caught us oh i'm sorry you know some anything why make up this fantastic tale there's no reason for it. You know what I'm saying? To me, that story has a lot of credence to it, so I, I put it on here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Do your own research. Let me know what you think. Um, but at any rate, keep your eye on the ocean. If you live near the ocean, keep your eyes out there. Use your binoculars or whatever. You never know what may surface. <laughs> hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all. Vanguard 1, Devo Polin, a scientific representative from a pacifist race called the Gandiri, has come to Earth to learn the one thing that humans do better than anyone else in the galaxy, to fight. In the sequel, Task Force Terminus, Earth is at war with an alien race called the Amdola. Devo Polin's new commission in the Terran fleet exposes him to bigotry and treachery, and he comes to realize that sometimes political and military maneuvering are one and the same. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment.